Hey guys, Brandon Lewis here of Embedded Computing Design, and I'm here with Don Barnison, who is the co-founder of Hex5 Security. How are you doing today, Mark? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Um, we've been talking, and Hex5 is a brand spanking new company, and they actually are really involved with RISC-V on the security front. And what Don and I have been discussing uh, is a little bit about uh, trusted execution environments, what's available today, notably Trust Zone, um, what's great about it, what's not so great about it, um, and sort of come to the conclusion that Trust Zone, while, I mean, it's, it's very well intentioned, um, it's probably the standard for what's out there today, um, but it's incredibly difficult to use. Um, we've seen numerous examples where there have been uh, hacks that have happened where Trust Zone was on a system, um, but it wasn't implemented or it wasn't implemented correctly. Um, what are your thoughts on the state of the trusted execution environment? Yeah, I think the problem with security today is it's just too hard to use. Mm -hmm. And so it only gets used where people are absolutely forced to use it in a mobile handset or a set-top box environment. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get implemented on all these systems where you could certainly benefit from it because mm -hmm. it's, again, just too hard to use. Mm -hmm. um, Trust Zone is absolutely the standard in the ARM world of the industry, but mm -hmm. it's a 20-year-old technology. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it suffers from some of the challenges of an aging technology. Mm -hmm. So at Hex5, we developed something called multi-zone security, mm -hmm. which is the first trusted execution environment for the RISC-V ISA. Okay. And we're able to take advantage of all of the development that's happened over the last 20 years and build something that we think is absolutely best in class. So um, everything that's happened over the last 20 years, and then obviously you're also dealing with the new ISA. Um, what are some of the advantages, uh, not only of multi-zone security, uh, but also of being able to take advantage of a new ISA like RISC-V? What has it enabled you to do? Yeah, so the traditional trusted execution environments have a secure and a non-secure world. Right. But today we have lots of different things that need security. Maybe you have a Bluetooth stack and a root of trust and a, a DRM engine. All of those have secrets, but they have secrets you want to keep from each other. Right. So only having two worlds doesn't really make sense in that context. You mm -hmm. want to have an unlimited number of worlds, right. each of which is equally secure. Mm -hmm. So multi-zone security gives you that capability. Mm -hmm. In addition, the RISC-V ISA, because it's a very modern ISA, has a lot of hooks that we're able to take advantage of. Mm -hmm. So it has multiple levels of privilege built into it. It has memory protection built into it. Mm -hmm. um, so that allows us to do this on standard hardware. So you don't mm -hmm. have to have a special core to do this. We can implement this on top of a standard RISC-V implementation, which is exactly what I'm showing here. Excellent. Uh, can we take a look and explain a little bit about what's going on? Yeah, sure, sure. So in this case, what I have is a Xilinx FPGA running a uh, Sci-5 E31 soft core. Mm -hmm. So it's a 32-bit RISC-V uh, running on top of this FPGA at about 65 megahertz. Mm -hmm. I have, th have multi-zone security running on top of that with three zones. So one of them is running a console that I'm talking to the computer with on. One is actually causing this LED to go through its rainbow function here. Mm -hmm. And for those of you from the RISC-V world, it's actually the Hello World demo from Sci-Fi. And one of them is controlling this beautiful $50 robot in this case, which you can think of as a big industrial robot. Correct. And so each of those zones is completely separate. And the only way they communicate with each other is via secure messaging infrastructure, which has no shared memory. Mm -hmm. So in this case, if I want to deploy the robot, what I can do is I can send a command across. So I can send a command to zone three, which causes that robot to do a, a deploy command. Mm -hmm. And then I can send a command to zone three, which will cause him to go into a structured dance. And at the same time, what I can be doing is running interrupts on zone two. So I can be pressing buttons here that's causing these interrupt service routines to run, and I can actually even preempt my own interrupts. And while all that's happening, I can reboot zone one. So we've got complete security through separation here. Mm -hmm. These zones don't interact with each other other than in ways that we control. So let's take this, this use case example um, and imagine it in a, a different sort of security context. Say that it is a, an, another sort of trusted execution environment. Would you have been able to do, to interrupt zone two um, while, this, uh, while zone three was going through its function or would that have Caused a, caused a fault in the entire system. Yeah, so a traditional trusted execution environment only has two contexts, a secure and a non-secure world. Right. So in this case, there isn't really a way to do three equally secure zones, or four mm -hmm. or five, or whatever the application requires right. in that space. And you can't move between them as seamlessly as I'm doing here, mm -hmm. because moving into the secure world is a very specialized set of instructions. In this case, everything is secure. All of these mm -hmm. zones are equally secure. Correct. That's just the context you build under. And then. One thing that's really important is the ease of use. Um, 
uh, the, the ease of development. Uh, what can you talk about that's different with this sort of uh, bladed architecture that you've implemented in multi-zone security um, in this sort of context? Yeah, so this doesn't disrupt the tool set or the code base at all. If you have something that runs on native bare metal RISC-V, you can drop it into one of these zones and it just runs right away. Mm -hmm. If you want to take advantage of some of the services we have in the nano kernel, we have a very small wrapper that you can add, which allows you to make calls to do things like send messages mm -hmm. or yield if you have nothing important to do. But you don't have to take advantage of those. Each of these zones is compiled and linked entirely separately. Mm -hmm. So you as a designer, you compile it and link it, and then you use our configurator to merge it together into this signed binary structure. Okay. So all of this comes together much more simply and in a much more robust way than you can envision with a traditional trusted execution environment. And how about communicating between zones that may be unique from one another? Maybe they were developed in a different language, or you know, how does information pass from zone to zone to zone in a heterogeneous type of system? Yeah, so as long as they speak the same language on the messenger box, they can, mm -hmm. best they can exchange information. They don't have to be compiled with the same tool set or the same libraries mm -hmm. or you know, even written in the same language. Mm -hmm. As long as they know what, what it means when they send messages to each other, they can communicate. That's very cool. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Don. I really appreciate that. Uh, that was Don Barnton of Hex5 Security. Um, a lot of new cool worlds, uh, maybe worlds upon worlds in uh, the security front, especially with RISC-V. I'm Brandon Lewis of Embedded Computing Design. Thanks for watching.